I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.30. And the next thing is additions to the agenda. Did you have some, right? We have a few, yes. We have a liquor license application for Plainfield Hardware. Um, it just happened to come in right after <coughs> the agenda. Um, and since you're looking at others, thought we would add that in. And then Rachel Grossman reached out about um, creating. Hi, it's Judith. It's 6.30 and your um, mics are off. Oh, Rachel just came back. Can you hear us now? I can. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Can we um, get that so we can see this little picture in there? That's a whole picture. Yeah. So you were going over out of business? Yeah, so additions, we have a liquor license from Plainfield Hardware. Yeah. Um, Rachel, I see, is actually here. Rachel actually sent me something. She was going to bring up a public comment, but in the event, she wasn't here on time. Um, so I can let Rachel speak to that if you would like, or we can wait for public comment, and she can mention that there. Um, and then the listers have a certificate for no appeal or suit pending for the select board to review. And I just wanted to bring up that parking issue too. Yes. Okay. Uh, so review a minute, January 30th. Looks good to me. Yes, I agree. I move to uh, approve the minutes as submitted. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Hi. The minutes have passed. Oh, thanks as always for the great job. Yes. So public comment. Um, so Rachel's here, so we can. Oh, okay. That Hi. would be me. Hey, Rachel. Yeah. Hi, Rachel. Hi there. How's everybody doing tonight? Okay. Great. Thank you. So, um. What's on my mind is I'm thinking about the December storm we had where people were out of power, some people for six days or five days, and some of us just two and a half days. Um, and I was thinking that we might want to think about a town safety plan for that event, um, or not that event, but I think it's likely that we're going to have more weather that's weird and um, potentially life-threatening for some people. Um, we, you know, we took care of our neighbors here, and I'm sure that everybody else in their neighborhood took care of their neighbors as well. But um, it'd be nice to have a plan. Callis opened up their elementary school for people, and um, water's a big thing. You know, we're fine. We have a wood stove, but we we really need to find water when the power goes out. Um, people want to charge up their devices, and some people just need somewhere to go that's warm. So that's what's on my mind tonight. So we do have a designated warm shelter in Barry. Um, we did put, you put some stuff on the uh, website. Did you not for the um, emergency plan? Well, the emergency information is out there, but it doesn't necessarily <coughs> have it here. Um, we have an emergency it's, plan. We do, yeah. but it's more <clears throat> a bunch of lists of contacts. It's not necessarily a, a storm is coming. What is a plan? And the world I come from with hurricanes, everything is done. There's a plan ahead of time. Yeah. So it's it just, this is, again, it's mostly contact information that lists where shelters are, but it it's not, doesn't really get into some of the things that she's speaking about, like water and preparation and, and things uh -huh. like that. So, yep. so I don't know. What do you want to say now? Well, every and year, every year we, we review our emergency management contacts. Yeah. Who's the who's the disaster coordinator? Who's yeah. the assistant coordinator? Yeah. Um, and that whole uh, several pieces of paper are reviewed by Mer by Vermont State Emergency Management. It's supposed to be part of a whole statewide emergency management plan or system. My question is kind of building on what you said, Rachel. Is is I, my question is where was Emer Vermont emergency management during this? We had forty thousand people without power. 
And I heard people were calling emergency management. And he said, it's not, not our, you know, not really our problem. Did That's what I called. And they should. I, they won't even call me back. So. And, and for eight years, when I was a manager, town, a city manager, not city manager, state office complex manager in Waterbury, I was on the logistics team for Vermont Emergency Management. And we would have regular trainings where we would look at some, create some system where there was a problem, and then we'd have to address it. And we went through Katrina and all that stuff. Um, and, and, and you know, with the, with the system open, and um, where were they? So there were meetings and calls. Callis opening up their school. Callis did that. All of that was independent of because Callis was on the calls. That same calls I was on. I, I mean, I'm holding the, the plan right here. There's no step for what happens when. Mm -hmm. So, like from my perspective, I had no idea what to do. I mean, yeah. I see contact names here. But, and, and to be quite honest with you, I don't have history in Vermont, so this is the first time going through this. So yeah. I honestly wasn't sure if Vermonters were gonna be like, ah, no big deal. Um, so in hurricane world in Florida, there's a protocol. Um, yeah. Every company I've worked at, we had a protocol. Um, everybody, it's just, it's ingrained in you. I bought water before the storm. I mean, it's just so, I, I don't know how to go about creating something like that here. I lived here for 40 so years and not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that's Rachel, that's, that's a, a very good concern. We share that concern. We had a select board meeting shortly after the power outage to discuss what happened and what we might want to do in the future. And we said, yeah, we sure better ought to do something in the future. But we didn't then uh, make a list of next steps and who was responsible for them. So it's, uh, it's very timely for you to come back to us and, and uh, raise this again. Would you uh, like to be in charge of working with us to uh, put uh, our ideas and your ideas and other town people ideas into motion so that we can be better prepared for next time? Sounds like that awful word committee, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just wanna say something on the subject because I've done some thinking about it and talking to people about it. One of the biggest problems that you have when you have emergencies, you don't have power. Is that correct? You have no power when power lines go down. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit on the kick of generation, you know, have people need to have generators or some way to get electricity. And that was my focus because when you have electricity, you have water and you have heat and you have a lot of other things. <clears throat> so I was thinking of having um, someone come in to speak about generators because people don't fully understand when you buy a generator, what you can do with that generator. So that was my focus on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just don't go buy a generator and plug your pump, pump into it and get water. Right. And generators are not necessarily accessible to everyone. And I could probably buy a generator. I don't want one. Um, okay. So, I mean, I think it's not a bad focus. And, and there were some front porch posts after the storm saying, you know, give, give me some generator recommendations. So I think it's not a bad um, focus, but I, th I don't think that's going to keep our, keep everyone safe. Um, I keep thinking, you know, in Callis, where they did open up the elementary school and people had a place to go, um, there was a man who was found dead in his home when the storm was over, an elderly man. Oh. So, you know, I think more on a neighborhood level of who's going to, you well, know, checking in with whom and making sure that nobody's. Well, um, this is how we handle it. Yeah. Neighbors help neighbors. Right. We all help each other. And that, you know, what you're saying is some people fall through the cracks or that's not a good system, whatever. I mean, that's just what we had to fall back on because that's what we did. Uh, people were in need and we helped, we helped our, our neighbors out okay. and, the, and people called the town office looking for help and there was no help to be had. I mean, I called the state, Gina called around, nothing. So then certain of us stepped up and brought generators to people and helped them out. Now, my, my focus is restoring power to people because most people need power. They need, they need those essentials. But if you're thinking something different, well, that's fine too. That was just my focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you, Rachel. I, I think it's a good conversation to continue to have 
Um, but going along the lines of the story that you shared, um, Seth, you know, there may be people who do fall through the cracks or are new to the area or, you know, um, people might have thought we're out of town, but are actually still in town. A, a, a way to kind of organize the town in, you know, neighborhoods or regions so that, okay, you know, Rachel's in charge of her area and, you know, anyone who is, you know, on oxygen doesn't have um, power or needs assistance or whatever, you know, contact Rachel and, you know, she'll funnel it up or, a you know, a phone chain or something so that there aren't people who are missing or that fall through the cracks. And maybe, you know, no one in her area has an extra generator, but the next area over does. And they can spend like a couple of hours outside someone's house and give them power for a couple of hours versus no power at all. I'm just brainstorming and I'm sure Rachel, you know, could think of some brainstorming as well. But I think I mean, now that it's on people's minds, you know, there's, I, I do appreciate that neighbors help neighbors, but if we can be, you know, we have the resources of, you know, social media and other ways to communicate with each other, if we can tap into that or be a little bit more um, comprehensive in how we reach out and make sure that you know, no one is freezing in their home. No one who is, you know, has some form of life support that they're relying upon or, you know, need their insulin or whatever, um, needs it to be refrigerated or a particular temperature and can't have that when there's no power. We can make sure that those folks don't fall through the crack and we actually are taking care of our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually, you know, when you say, you talk about temperature, um, there kind of needs to be a plan for that in the summer as well. We don't think of mm -hmm. summer as a hard, you know, the power goes out in summer and you buy ice and, you know, you, you hope your stuff doesn't go bad. But um, if you have medications that need to be at a certain temperature, you're at risk. But that does boil down to power. I mean, I don't want to be hammering too much on that issue, but it's all about electricity. So mm -hmm. anyway, one more comment and then we'll just put this on as agenda item in the future. Well, that, that was going to be my comment. This is a public comment. And, right, uh, it's getting Yeah, well. so, so I, I would like to ask uh, Rachel, if you'd be willing to write up a, a charge for, and the uh, a suggested name for a committee to handle this. And then we can review it as a, at a future uh, select board meeting. I'm not clear on what you're asking because I don't know what you mean by write up a charge. And do you want me to find committee members? Uh, not no, not necessarily find committee <laughs> members. Just what, what should this committee do? That's a charge. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Purview. Yep. yep. Okay, so okay. everybody okay with that? Sure. We'll just put it on as agenda item now in the future. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because right now we got. But thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. You bet. I, I have a quick report related to that. Um, I and a bunch of other people complained about wash when we had power outages and our only access to the internet was over our phone that we couldn't read or with only great difficulty, we could read the power outage updates from Washington Electric. And I, I let them know about that and uh, they, they fixed that now. So it's oh, much okay. easier to read. Okay. They, they've gotten rid of their, they've, they've like trumped their little banner at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna move to our next agenda item. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to be short with uh, Rachel, but we just got a lot of things. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine, thank uh, you for listening. Oh, no, we're, you. Definitely, um, you brought up a concern that we've also uh, brought up ourselves. And um, we, we would like to have, we like to do something besides nothing. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next um, item on our agenda is board work session to discuss municipal assistant interview questions. Uh, potential executive session. So we have a very few minutes. Do we have the question? Did you? Okay. So. Do we want to go in executive session on that, or do we just want to? Yes, I, I move that we enter executive session. Please insert into the minutes the language about the statute uh, that we are going to be discussing uh, personnel matters. 
Second. Aye. 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 Is the motion in order? We're out of uh, executive session. Okay, I move to authorize the town administrator to hire the candidate interviewed at the current salary for the municipal assistant, pending satisfactory reports on the background check and references. I'll second it. Or un unconditioned or satisfactory reports. No, yeah. I'll second it. Yeah. Now you second it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, do have it. All right. Right on time. Yeah, right on time. Okay. And you'll uh, notify the camera. Yes, I will. Um, the next item on agenda, village center crosswalk and traffic safety discussion. And just, just so, to, um, I, I just want to double check because everybody who was in the waiting room is back. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Um, so Melissa emailed me right before the meeting that she had a family emergency and cannot could not attend this meeting. Okay. So we can either this is I can let you know what this topic is and we can bring Melissa back. We can touch on it briefly and bring Melissa at a future meeting. Who's Melissa? She lives right next to the post office, um, oh. right in the village center. She oh. wrote that piece so, that's in her packet. Oh, oh so right here, yeah. There, um, the it started really with kind of the crosswalk in that yeah. area, as we all know. That sign's kind of difficult. That yeah. area, it's kind of difficult to see. I don't think the sign has been hit since I've been here, but my understanding is the sign has been hit numerous times um, by Getting back into it. traffic. <laughs> yeah. I don't um, know how people park right there. It's a dumb place to park. It's dangerous. They shouldn't even be parking in the front. Then they're backing out of the traffic. So Why in general, I... the area is a problem for yeah. sure, just with traffic and yeah. Bruce and I had actually discussed this a bit yeah. um, before he left. Yeah. Uh, and he said there was, it just kind of is what it is. You know, I mean, I, I think there was a, a an altered design yes. that was proposed but not agreed to by landowners in the area. So we kind of have what we have. So I reached out to VTrans to have them take a look at the area, see if there was anything we could do better. Um, they are going to replace the crosswalk sign with one that is more visible, and we hope that that will help with the crosswalk aspect of it. You know, he didn't really have a lot to say about the traffic because the traffic is just kind of the traffic, you yeah, know. Um, but, that. you know, um, one of the things Melissa had reached out about was, you know, one of those like flashing yeah. walk signs, right. um, which obviously we, we could pursue in working with V Trans to install. Um, it would obviously be at our cost. He said those are around $12,000. But then I thought his other proposal that he sent, and that's what you have in your packet um, as well, is kind of a slightly revised sidewalk area there, kind of building up the curve a bit. Um, of course, I have no idea what the costs and what all would be involved, permitting and whatnot with, with that. But um, it seems like a way, again, we're really just focusing on the crosswalk and fixing that and the traffic issues. I know Melissa has reached out about, I don't know how to stop people from pulling out from Dudley's or the post you office. You gotta pull out when you got a chance. Yeah, I, I don't know how to fix that. Um, <laughs> Rosie and anybody that picks up our mail can attest to the difficulty of making the left out of the post yeah. office and getting the mail every morning. Um, so, so that was the topic. Uh, Melissa's not here, obviously living right there, could provide a lot more firsthand knowledge of what she sees on a regular basis there, but that that was the issue we brought. Mm -hmm. And I thought John's point was a good one that a lot of the concerns that Melissa had about people who are texting while driving or falling asleep while driving, uh, impatient, um, that that is hard to address with infrastructure. Yes. Yes. He's so really the crosswalk, in my opinion, is the only thing that we can really look at. Right. But, I, but, you know, it, it kind of started with that, but then a lot of the comments have been more traffic related, which the crosswalk isn't necessarily enough. Right. But but one of the problems there is the parking issue. Yeah. You know, when you park in front of the post office, not safe. When you pull out and you back out, it's not safe. So the thing is, there's no raised curb there, um, and we couldn't we couldn't get our minds around how to do that, put a raised curb there. And then there were some issues with the landowner with uh, Jeff that owned the store at that time, 
hard to work with. So that's where a lot of the problems centered. But now his daughter owns a store and he passed away. She's a lot easier to work with. So if there's something that we can do that requires a modification of that area and you need landowner to buy in, that, that landowner is a lot easier to work with. So I just want to say that, that we could do some modification there, perhaps curbing, whatever. But in my world, I go there every day, parking in the front stage. It shouldn't be even allowed, to be honest with you. You should drive around the back. Plenty of parking out there. And you drive the long. back in the traffic. I know, that's what it's happens. Getting, People getting, it's like, not oh. handicap accessible, though, in the back, is it? But you can still walk to the side. It's accessible. If you can still walk, perhaps. You can park, but... <laughs> you can park by the side. You don't have to park in the front. And actually, it's more dangerous to get the handicap ramp from the front, you can yeah, you're closer on the side. On the safe side. Mm -hmm. But really, um, parking a parking pattern and a traffic pattern could be established around that area that would make it safer. But no one's ever addressed that with the current owner. So I'm just saying that that could be improved with maybe talk to the landowners and come up with a plan. Maybe have the traffic pattern just go a certain one way around there. And designate the parking a little bit better. The speed through town is pretty fast too. You know, the speed is drives fast. thirty; they're actually driving forty. Yeah. You know, fast well, enough. the thing is that they speed up after they get to the light, or when they get to the light and it's green, oh, whew, let's speed up. By the time they hit Dudley's, they're going pretty fast. And there's some big trucks that do that too. Oh yeah, there are. Yeah, so it's, it's hard to pull out there. Anyway, that's that's my talk on that. <laughs> but I I think that we can improve that significantly. Well, at least right, across, I want to see what that lady is. But a, a crosswalk sign, you can, you can get all different types of crosswalk signs. Yeah. You can get some that just flash. Yeah. You can get some that people can push a button and it lights up and flashes. Yeah. They're all various prices. I think um, I think in Harvard, we're looking at those are around $4,000 for, for the for flashing ones that you press. No, just it's just one that you, yeah, yeah, it was. It's, it, you just walk up, you can look online and see. I think you can find them. In, but it depends on what you want. It's something that really. Another solution that's much more low tech that I've seen. Well, what one low tech solution is what John has suggested in his memo, which is put in a vertical um, yeah. fluorescent stripe on the post, make it a little more visible. But also, oh, yeah. I've seen uh, that there are baskets, quivers basically, and instead of arrows, you've got uh, flags, orange flags, and you have those on either side. And, and when someone wants to cross the street, they take one of the flags, they wave it, they walk across the street, and they put it in the quiver on the other side. You know, people are not used to having somebody cross the street here, even now. You don't no. see it that often, but no, they don't even think to stop. Right. Know? They don't think to stop. I mean, a flashing light would definitely help. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't recommend that's saying, putting a crosswalk sign in the middle of the road. We did that. And hard wicked people were always running over it. No, right. <laughs> on purpose or? Uh, no, both ways. Oh. Well, the problem with that sign right. that we have right now is people back into it because they park in the front and they right. back right into it. And <laughs> even if you get a solid sign there with a flashing light on, they're still going to back into it. But I thought you wanted it um, lit up or announcing itself so people would slow down. Well, that's a good idea. But having a flash that's what she was asking should for. Yeah. John was yeah. saying we'd have to pay for it, right? He said by 12 grand, yeah. Maybe, maybe they are now. I don't know. So, well, maybe we should have John here too at some point to brainstorm with us. John works for V Trans, yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a bicycle and pedestrian coordinator, okay. And has been in that position for oh, a couple decades now, at least, at least 15 years. <laughs> You would know what they cost. Yep. Okay. So I guess are we asking Gina to put this on the agenda? For again, or yeah. Yeah, I know Melissa back and yeah. said to her that we just so I'm gonna check with her on her schedule. Okay. We'll get her yeah. back on the agenda. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so the next thing on our agenda is consideration of CAI Technologies Tax Map Maintenance Contract for 2023-2024 update cycle. This is something I think you see every year. Yes. yes. Um, but uh, this is the updated agreement. Slight change in the cost as with most other things these days, but not drastic. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Sounds Sounds okay to me. Do you need a, a motion? 
Yeah. We would need a motion. Okay. Or we could just sign it according to the, your memo to the select board. Yeah. Are we all signing? Yeah. Three, yeah. Three of, yeah. If three of us sign it and we have four people here, okay. then we don't need a motion, I don't think. Okay. So we'll just sign it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's make sure we sign it before we leave. So then you hand it to me and we'll start that process. Well, I, I think I'll start it. Okay. Right here. Um, the next item consideration of avenue of contract renewal for land records management. Yeah, now, this is going to go up a little bit. A couple hundred bucks here, $500 there. Yep. A little bit. So I'm a little bit concerned that uh, you recorded that midway through the current contract, they stopped providing ink cartridges for the laser, laser printer and thermal paper and ribbons for the receipt printers. Is that part of the contract that they were supposed to be providing and they just stopped doing that? It was. Yeah. It was. I voiced my concerns. Uh -huh. um, the company uh, did not, they didn't respond other than to say this was something that was coming down the pipe and they could no longer um, continue to provide those, those products. Mm. That was probably two years ago. The good news is that it's fairly insignificant amount. It's, it was three hundred dollars, roughly. Um, but I bought you know ten ribbons for the two printers, mm -hmm. and that was a whopping twenty dollars on Amazon. Um, the rest of it is the toner for the printer cartridge, which we would pretty much recoup from the vault fees that we give. That we get from people paying their dollar per page. It says the manner in which they did it, not responding to your yeah, just doing it in the middle of the contract and not responding to your request for um, information. It it was difficult, but there, there was a time during this contract when the company was in a little bit of disarray. They've been since the last five year contract, the last contract that we <clears throat> contracted with was with a company called Conduit. Yep. And Avenue bought conduit. Oh. And this was when the change was made. So we are now contracting with Avenue. Oh. They, they were Xerox to begin with. <clears throat> They've literally been bought. And, so were there any were there any other ways in which they did not perform their side of the contract? No. No. They've actually been as responsive as they could be for most of everything <clears throat> that we've had. Have gone. It's also been a really reliable system. Mm -hmm. I it's rare that I have to contact support for much of anything. And they're getting pretty close to being done too, right? They are. What you mean the the labor yeah. records? Yeah, they're never done. I get new ones. Every no, day. what I mean is done a major like let's get this all done. Let's go back ten years. Let's go back no. fifteen. Let's go ahead twenty. No, they're, they're, actually, just... they're, back, they're actually done. Oh, they're done? They finished book one, page one on December 20th. So this is just like ongoing. So this is for the ongoing contract for sure. a regular day to day business. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. 10,000 bucks a year plus cost. Mm -hmm. There isn't anybody else that does it, is it? There are two other companies that do it. One is called Cot, and it's used by about 60 other towns. It's the most prevalent in the state. And they unfortunately they're cloud based and they got hacked in December and they were down for a month plus. Wow. Um, and couldn't record. Um, they also researchers like the Avenue system better. It's easier to use. It's cleaner, and the benefit for other folks outside of here with the Avenue system is if you want to look up your property, yeah. you, want, you want to just take a peek and see your deed. Mm -hmm. Right. You can actually literally see it. You can't print it without paying for it, but you can see it and you can see that it's there. Huh. So um, that's that's advantageous um, when attorneys just need to check to see if a discharge has been placed. Right. Whereas the two other systems, profile is the other, um, and they're relatively new to the scene. Um, the advantage is that they don't have to, they can either use their account to go ahead and print off a discharge and pay $3 a page, or if they just need to see that a discharge has been filed, they can see that. Right. So how many other towns use that? Do you think? There are 27, I think, at last count. Most of them are the larger ones. Ferry oh, wow. City, Burlington, South yep. Burlington. Um, 
Morrisville used to, they just switched over to co-file. They're saying they're not sure. <clears throat> they really think it was an advantage for them to do that. Did they do that because of cost or? Um, it's hard to compare costs apples to apples because it's mostly based on your volumes and different towns have different volumes. Oh, I see. Huh. So I'm not really able to, to give you good information that way. Um, I look at it as in ease of use yeah. for both yeah. us here in the office. It does what it needs to do and it's ease of use for researchers. Yeah. Um, they need to be able to, to come in here and find what they need to find. Yeah. Um, the indexing is very powerful on this particular system, and I think that's where the strengths lie. Huh. Well, so your recommendation is to just do it. Just do it. I would like to. I would like to continue working with this company. I think yeah. they made some improvements along the way, and that they are. They've been really committed to keeping their support staff through all these numerous changes. Yeah. I still have the same person that was working with Terry Conti 10 years ago. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. Hmm. Sounds good to me then. If you're happy, we're happy. Thank you. No, if you're happy, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Can't speak for everyone else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you know, like a chess fight. I recognize yeah. that it's a pretty good big number for the year, but considering it allows us, they store our records digitally and microfilm yeah. and our records are in three different locations and they help us to secure that huh. it's so you're getting um, a lot of service it sounds like yeah yeah this also includes the map office which we've opened but we've not uploaded any maps into yet so as soon as we get ready to do that next big project of scanning our survey maps into the system that will be an added benefit that's really going to be helpful for everybody is that something that office workers will do or that um, somebody I, else will do? I'm not sure. I'm thinking that it may be a project that we do in bits and pieces because I am reluctant to let these maps leave the office. Right. Um, there are companies that can come in and do that service for you. It's pretty pricey, but I think we can probably manage it um, either on our own or maybe contract somebody to come in and, and help us just do the scanning and I would do the indexing. Mm -hmm. um, because it's got to be indexed a specific way and we want to try to get parcel numbers in there somewhere as well. That's something yeah. that we've been missing for years. Yeah. And that's going to be another cost. Mm -hmm. on the Eventually, but yeah. we're already paying for the map office. It's already set up so that as soon as we start getting, yeah. you know, even a few maps and we can just scan them in once we get the scanner right. mm -hmm. in working order and start uploading. Oh, good. And for this one, Gina, you're looking to have authorization to sign it yourself? Yeah, right. Well, or we can authorize your partner to sign it. Oh, you can sign it. Yeah. You want to make the motion? Sure. I'm just trying to figure out what the motion is. Yeah, let's the good. contract for Avenue for the ensuing year and this right is time five years. to sign it. This is a five year contract. Oh, it. for a five year contract. Yeah. Okay. Well, good thing you didn't say that. No, I didn't say it. No, we just heard the motion. I think you made the motion. Yeah. Okay, so, 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 I, so I make a motion that, that we that the select board approve the contract for five years with Avenue, Avenue, uh, and um, we authorize uh, Town Administrator Jenkins to sign the agreement on behalf of the select board. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Tobacco license application for Angel Hargrove. Uh, you're skipping over the Energy Committee appointment? Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. whoops. Yeah, I crossed off the wrong name. One update to the names that you have on your list. Uh, Zach emailed me shortly before the meeting that Tom Fisher is no longer able to participate in the committee. So he asked that we just remove that name. Okay. If the select board opts to appoint these individuals. No, I think we should force them to. So take Fisher <laughs> off. <laughs> Okay, so we are actually doing that. Uh, Planning Commission Energy Committee appointments. So they want all these people on. Yeah. All, these, all these people have applied. There's six people. How many do they need? They're, they're, he's requesting that give this be the committee. There's six people. So it would be six, correct? An even number, which isn't always great. But maybe one person won't show up. 
Okay. Or they could try to find a seventh. Yes, yeah, so Seth. It, Seth. Yeah. Uh, I was at the meeting when we when we talked about this issue. They're they're all pretty engaged and and enthusiastic about joining. We we did talk about size and not wanting to be um, too excessive and and unwieldy. Um, but there wasn't a determination made on how many the upper, you know, how many the limit should be for the committee, but these sort of, it was six out of six that expressed interest in the, and the planning commission unanimously, unanimously thought that this was appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Sure. Uh, these are highly qualified people and we are lucky to have them in town and willing to share their expertise with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Ian, a motion to recommend the appointments? We need a motion to appoint. Oh. Yeah, we're supposed to appoint them, I believe. Yes, to appoint them. Yeah, appoint them. <laughs> now, I, I move to appoint Andy Shapiro, Ben McCall, Austin Tate, Emily Levin, uh, Stephen Miracle, and Rick Barstow to the Energy Committee in its latest configuration. Sure. To, to the, the newly reformed East Montpelier Energy That's Committee. How's that? Yeah. You need second. a second? There you go. We have a second. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Guys appear to have it, they do have it. Okay, so that took care of the Energy Committee. And now we can go to the tobacco license application. And that is. Um, may I address that? Sure. So I emailed shortly before the meeting uh, to say a few people to say, wait, wait a minute, I don't think we've had tobacco licenses before us before. Uh, and I did some research, which suggested to me that we didn't really have much of a role in, in that. Um, we, your aunt, we can't say yes or no uh, to, to that. Um, and Rosie and I had a discussion beforehand, apparently uh, the, the statute has changed. And you want to tell the group what you told me when I came in? Well, last year, the statute changed um, partially due to changes that the Department of Liquor Control, Liquor and Lottery is doing um, to create their on, online portal for license renewal. So as part of all of the changes that they were submitting, um, they have now made the request that towns, the municipal body of the town, or the legislative body of the town, approve both liquor and tobacco licenses, as well as any tobacco um, substitute, which I presume is vaping, um, vaping licenses. You have never in your history had to approve a tobacco license before. Um, it is new this year. The general consensus from the folks at the Department of Liquor Control when we had our training last summer was that they are still doing all the legwork with all the investigations and ensuring that people have the approved um, and required education that's involved for all licenses, whether it be tobacco, liquor, or anything else. Um, but for whatever reason they felt that, or the legislature felt that the towns should at least have knowledge that these were happening. So it's a new deal. Yeah, it, it's a little bit new, but it's really no different to me than a normal liquor license renewal that we would get from anyone else. Just now we also need to do tobacco. We will right. probably see one from Dudley's as well. Okay. And it said there's a violation listed on the application, but there is a violation. They were unable to share the specifics with me. The person for whom the violation is listed had no idea what it was, what it even was. It could be something that is literally decades old. Uh, the Department of Liquor Control will not allow a license to be sent through the portal for authorization by a town if the applicant has had a misdemeanor in the last 10 years or, I'm sorry, a felony in the last 10 years or misdemeanor in the last three. So, he said it was okay. They they basically said they're fine with it, and that there are very few instances that they've had in the last ten years that have um, caused them not to allow a license to be approved. So, based on that new information from Rosie, then I guess 
uh, I'm comfortable with us approving this application at this point. And then I would like to just revisit our role in liquor and tobacco license and, and other things. I, mean, I have a sheet here from the Department of Liquor and Lottery Division of Liquor Control that says uh, that there are there's no town approval required for tobacco licenses, manufacturer license, fourth class licenses, farmer market permit, et cetera, et cetera. But it's dated um, 11 in uh, November of 21. Right, that so, was the last the year before. Right, right. So I guess what I'd like to do is get an idea of how things, have, how the landscape has shifted with this new landscape, this, this new legislation, and um, you know, bring back a discussion of how much we want to just delegate this to, to the town clerk. There are a number of towns that give blanket authorization for their town clerks to handle these on a regular basis, just regular renewals. Um, that's obviously up to the board's pleasure what they want to do with those or not. I could certainly see why that wouldn't have happened five years ago when I started because I had no clue what I was doing. Um, but at this point, I would feel fairly comfortable um, processing a standard uh, renewal of a license for either tobacco or liquor. However, I feel it's important that you folks see any catering or special event licenses that come across my desk, any manufacturer's licenses that we may see, um, distribution, special events. Um, in the past, what we have mostly seen are special event catering licenses, and we've had um, a festival license. Uh, what was it, three years ago when uh, Morris Farm had their music festival. So we really don't get a lot of activity with these. Um, but yeah. I guess what I'm saying is I would be sure to let you know if there was something other than a standard non-renewal. And that's also something that could be easily reported to you folks as, as they come along on a monthly basis. I mean, what we've done in the past is what Bruce used to do. We just sent them around if mm -hmm. we had a problem with something that we got in touch with. Yeah, so well, that was for caterers. That's, that's a special not catering and special yeah. events. That's not just the regular license. The that's, license. That's a that's a catering license. Oh, okay, Bruce so those are the ones that you would say. Call, yeah. let, let us know within twenty four hours if you have a problem. Right. Yeah. So the regular ones, the light liquor license ones, we've done in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can continue to do that if you want. But we don't have to. No, no we don't have to. I, 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 I have to authorize to. somebody else to do it. I authorize town clerk to do it. Yeah, me. me I too. think I would too. I would too. Uh, I, I, for the regular renewal. So I, I, I guess I'd, I'd like to just hold off and, and address this with the bigger picture once we have a big uh, understanding of what this new legislation does. Take everything in one package. What's the new legislation do? Well, that, that's what I'd like to understand. It, it created the licensing portal. Oh. If electronic. Electronic means everything's electronic. The only thing that's not electronic is they haven't figured out a way for the towns to collect their money. Oh. Um, so we still have people handing us paper checks, which okay. is fine. Um, but there are also some minor changes in some of the pricing of some of the licenses. And um, there were some changes that DLC made for licenses that we don't normally handle or that we don't actually see a lot of. There's, there were changes in the manufacturing uh, license application huh. and things like that. So my understanding is kind of a, a housekeeping sort yeah. of sort of change, Clean up. as well as the creation of their portal. Okay, got a hand from Judith. Oh yeah, yes, Judith. Muted. Thanks, Rosie. And you may or may not know the answer to this, but. If we're being asked to approve the license application, it appears that there should be some standards or factors that we should be reviewing and making our determination. That's the only thing that kind of holds me up that we're now involved in the review process, but I haven't found anything about what the factors are for determining whether or when you know, we can or may say no or if it's just a rubber stamp. Um, I so I, 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 I'm yeah, sorry. We're, gonna, we um, we're not approving, we're authorizing. Okay. The Department of Liquor Control approves. I know it's semantics in some cases. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I guess, you know, the bullet is if we feel comfortable with it, well, what are the factors that make us, that would warrant our feeling comfortable or uncomfortable? You know, well, th that's, and it's maybe similar to what Carl's saying about maybe having 
a little bit more info on it and the town's involvement in it. Um, but th that was just a question that I had. That's reasonable. I think that um, something that I would look at in a renewal license would be, okay, so the person's name, phone number, contact information is there and is accurate. So we can, if we need to contact them, we have the ability to do so. Uh, that they are an actual business in this town and that they're running in this town and that we would, you know, so we see a conviction. So yeah. I call DLC to see what this conviction is all about. They reassure me. If, you know, basically it sounds to me like they have done the approval process that that says that this person is okay. As far as they're concerned, these people are okay to get these licenses. So they, we're just they, rubber stamping. They merely want the town to rubber stamp and say, okay, <clears throat> we know that you're granting these folks a license. I think that's how their system is really working. So here's what the legislation says. Here's, here's what the statute says. We're, we're looking at Title Seven, Alcohol, Beverages, Cannabis, and Tobacco, Chapter 40, Tobacco Products. And it says that the, the board, so the liquor control board, I guess, um, shall prepare and issue tobacco and, um, let me see, I'm sorry, I gotta read further down. For a license or endorsement required under this section, a person shall apply to the legislative body of the municipality, that's us, and pay the following fees, and it lists the fees. And then the next section says, the municipal clerk shall forward the application to the division and the division shall issue the tobacco license and the tobacco substitute endorsement as applicable. So there is no role in the statute that I see for us to say yes or no. It's just that I they send it to us the and we give, it to, we give right. it to the town clerk. And, and we, we, from my past experience, we had police department in the town where I work and we would always ask Police chief, so if you had any problems with these people, do you know if there's any violations? Mm -hmm. Right. But liquor control is already doing it. That's right. what they have liquor control officers for. And yeah. if the violation is usually through liquor control at Sam. Yeah. So they're the ones that know. We're not going to know unless we happen to be hearsay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we're not really in the position to deny or approve because we no. don't really we're have the any, funnel. Yeah. 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 We don't have any criteria that we are applying. If it's what you're saying, account. what are what are we <laughs> saying yes or no to? Because we don't. What are we saying? What are we looking at? I don't so know we're just can't. passing it along. What yeah. what was that, Judith? Well, I, I I just was repeating what you had said. We're just passing it along. We shall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's ministerial our role. Yeah. Well, okay. It may be that because Department of Liquor Control has the enforcement capability, right. and the town yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so right now we have a tobacco license application before us, Plainfield Harbor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we doing with that? Saying, You're okay, we're, we're noting that it's here and we're going to authorize it, pass it along. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you, I think we can do that by consensus, right? Have you noticed any problems with that? Yeah. Um, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do want to say that I, th I, um, I think there's no redeeming social value in tobacco products and that uh, they kill a lot of people. And uh, I regret that uh, we have them on sale here in town, but uh, I think to prohibit them uh, would require a large discussion. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> even, even if we did have, even if we did have the authority to do it, which we don't. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, we are getting in the weeds on this one. I like this. The, the weeds. Yeah. The weeds. Yeah. 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 Okay. The weeds. <laughs> huh. I'm not going to second that. <laughs> I'm not saying that either, but well, I'm not moving. Probably on. going out a little bit of a limb. I'm, I'm just going on the record. <laughs> okay. All right. So, getting back to serious business, we're not saying anything about this application. We're just saying it's fine. You're directing the clerk to. Yeah. We're directing the clerk to do, to do, do your work. Do yeah. your yeah. Yeah. Make sure the address is correct and the people's <laughs> names are spelled correct. <laughs> uh, okay. So do I, um, can I move on? Yes. No more statements? No Okay. I breathe in half my can. Now the next <laughs> item is consideration of liquor license applications. 
Fox market. First class, second class, outside consumption. Also, Plainfield Harbor. And Plainfield Harbor was yes. an addition was to the Was that added in? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we might as well deal with all of them. Did they get their paperwork right this time? Yes. Good. Okay. It's a whole lot easier now that they're going on the portal to do it. Okay. Okay. So, um, what does everyone think? Um, do we have to? Want to make any special statements? No. <laughs> 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 you just going to authorize the town clerk. Yeah. Yeah. Approve the application. Yeah. Well, we did the last one by consensus. Yeah, I think that just by consensus, it's it's just yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Everyone's Rosie. good with that. That was for Parker well, as well. In the, yeah. in, the, in the past, in the past, we've approved them by motion. I, I thought so yeah. too. Yeah. I think yeah. we need a motion. I, I, I thought that we only in the, in the past it required the signature of the chair. Yeah. Uh, and right. It, and it no longer does. Okay. Well. well just right, for, that's what we had the most for all time's sake until we get a better grip on uh, our purview here. Why don't we make a motion? Sure, let's make a motion. Well, heard anything. Make a motion to approve both the Fox Market um, and oh, you need separate motions for each one? No, yeah. no, I was, gonna say, I was just going to say that Fox Market's request for first class, second class, yeah, and outside consumption, yeah, and Plainfield Hardware. Um, they are asking just for second, tobacco, second class. Second class. Oh, second class, okay, second class, second class license, Liquor. and and uh, we, the select board will authorize the town clerk to approve the applications for further to processing. process the application. Hmm? Process it. I was going to say for further processing. Thank you. <laughs> oh, do some further processing. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Um, make sure you know <laughs> who made that. <laughs> that word. <laughs> so you want your name? <laughs> Unless you want to. I know what I'm good. <laughs> My name is bandied around enough. <laughs> Do we have a second? Here we go. Second. I'll second that. Oh, Amy, second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. <laughs> thank, you, uh, thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. And, um, so how accurate did you want your statement to read about tobacco products? I'm just asking <laughs> you, because we have a meeting taker here that does a very great yeah, job. Yeah, if you'd like to email it to me, I can get the word I need. So yeah, I okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Um, okay, the next item is consideration of East Montpelier Fire Department memorandum of understanding for proposed radio communication system. I believe you're here to address that. I'm here to address it. All right. Sure. At least I hope I can address it. Do you want to tell us who you are for the record? Albert Petrella, and I'm the chief of East Montpelier Fire Department. So basically, are you an interim chief until election? Yeah. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, Capital West, yeah. Capital Fire Mutual Aid, is in the process of upgrading the radio system. It's something that's in the design phase and they're going to go out hopefully to bid in the next year they hope to be out to bid within the next year they're in the process of getting rfps and then that will put us uh, make each member organization responsible for contributing towards paying off that debt um, the city of montpelier is going to be the bank per se that to go out and bond for this um, and so they what they want in the discussions when this whole process started between the central vermont um, public safety authority and trying to set up regionalized dispatching city of barry city of montpelier capital west um, things came up discussions about how Things might not be um, shared between all the member towns. And so one of the things that came out was the member random of understanding so that you're aware that you folks back when this was created 20, 15 years ago, I don't know the exact date, um, that the fire chief was the designated rep that represented the towns in the capital fire mutual aid. Capital West. And so they want reaffirmation. And I think to go forward, they want to bring this every year so that it's fresh in everybody's mind. Yes, 
the town is aware that the fire chief is the one that represents the town at these meetings and discusses that. And hopefully I should bring that stuff back. So you're aware as things progress and change. So um, oh, this is I got an email from Toby that laid out the cost. And they, he said it was coming out of your capital plan. Yeah, 54, 56,000. Yeah. I just want to bring everyone to speed on that. Um, so what it says is East Point Fire Department Memorandum of Understanding. Is that something that we're going to sign? We have one? Or are we just talking? Well, they, they would like you to, to basically accept it and sign off on it and have a record in your minutes yeah. to reflect that. That we're accepting the cost or your, I mean, your. Well, no, it's more than the actual memorandum of understanding. I think you all got copies. Mm -hmm. We sure. don't. Yeah, oh, okay. All right. We have the two be signed copy there. So okay. Yep. So we probably need a motion. So can I ask a couple a question? So this is new, this memorandum of understanding. This is a new this isn't a renewal of something that has been done in the past um, to memorialize the agreement between the parties regarding the capital fire mutual aid system. No, it's not new. That's it's been around since it was created. And okay. it's that the fire chief is the rep that, but as town people change in town government, fire chiefs change in the organizations. Some of that stuff gets lost in the process, or you don't realize yeah. that as a town, oh, the fire chief is the one that represents you in this organization. And so somebody, I think from, I don't know who brought it up, that felt things were happening, the towns didn't know about it, who's controlling what. And so the attorney for that represents Capital West said that the towns should be refreshed in this and understand. And that's what the MOU is for. Yeah. yeah, something you put on okay. file. I have to. So, um, so for for both us and Callis, we have the same delegate. Right. Callis, <clears throat> Callis officially is not a, a member organization. Okay. But you're the chief of the combined fire department, emergency services, mm -hmm. basically. So CALS is part of it in that they're part of that organization. Right. But there, if you look in the bylaws, it states all the towns that are member organizations. Yeah. And so when this was created, I don't know exactly when. Um, Callis was not part of it because East Montpelier was the fire department. Yeah. So it was the town of East Montpelier. Yeah. So I, I guess I have a question. Or I have a couple of questions about the MIU. One in the now, therefore, there's reference to a project. Project is not defined unless I'm not seeing it. And it could be that I'm just not seeing it. Radio purchase. It's the upgrade to radio system. Okay. Where is that defined? I don't have a well problem. number four <clears throat> uh for replacement equipment we use your annual budgeting process to appropriate the necessary funds for operation maintenance of the project um yeah it's a capital p project so that's a term of art to mean something specific but the document itself doesn't define what that is Unless someone can show me where project is defined, that would need to be changed because that's not clear. Um, in paragraph six, the parties affirm that their respective fire chiefs, so the parties, the town of East Montpelier is a party. The town of East Montpelier does not have a fire chief. EMFD has a fire chief. The town of East Montpelier does not.
So that would need to, that's not accurate. Um, Yeah, I think I think that's a good point, uh, Judith. And I think there is a problem as I'm just quickly reading this um, with this, the first whereas clause. It says that um, pursuant to Title 20, Chapter 175, uh, Subchapter 3, VSA, various municipalities in and around the Central Vermont area form the Capital Fire Mutual Aid System. But if you look at the text of the statute, it says that a private and volunteer fire department may enter into mutual aid agreements. So it's quite possible in the lack of any other documentation for us to review here, it's quite possible that Capital West is composed of the East Montpelier Fire Department and not the town of East Montpelier at all as a, as a member. Yeah, they're a party. Right. So, that's, I mean, that's, that's possible. Right. Because they are considered a party. We, we'd have to look the at the, the founding documents for Capital West. Because they're not, they're not a town, it's not a town fire department. They're, they're, they're right. a profit. Right. So you may be the party that's, well, that's designated to statute. So I, I'm, right. yeah, I'm having a hard time understanding how we would sign this. Oh, because? Because we're not a party. Possibly. I mean, we don't have enough information to show that we are a party to this. Um, the mem we're listed as a member, I think, under the um, bylaws. I saw that somewhere. I could be wrong. So each yeah. Montpelier is a uh, member, but we don't have fire departments to own separate thing, but they can still, they can be a member. Yeah. Right. And he's still the designated member. But we're okay. signing you that but we can sign it because we are a part. Okay, so it says, yeah. uh, I think this is what you're referring to, Article 5 of the bylaws, a membership of this system of Capital, Capital West shall consist of Vermont municipalities and private organizations signatory to these articles <clears throat> as represented by their respective fire departments, namely, and uh, East Montpelier is listed. I, I'm not clear whether we as a municipality are East Montpelier there or whether that's East Montpelier Fire Department. As a member, you mean? Mm -hmm. Right. And private. Order. Well, they're probably not there either. Like, now, I don't think we should be signing this if we're, we're all not, we don't have a mutual meeting of the minds. <laughs> this means. And you may not need to. I mean, you're using your own funding and you may just. Sign this. Yeah, they need to sign the MOU. <laughs> yeah. Not us. Whoops. Yeah, that, that, I'll, I'll have to find that out. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're the guys who are paying for it anyway. Yeah. That's what I was we, thinking is we don't have any. Well, we do find it because we fund, we fund them. Right. <laughs> we hire them. We hire them, actually. Mm, right. We have a contract right. for them. Right. Right. Well, just find that out, I guess. I got, I can, yeah, because this is not something that has to happen to me. No. Yeah. But um, I can find that out. And of course, Judith's point that the project is not defined is, is kind of a good point because there is nothing. They talk to say about the plan the and project? they talk about the project. What's the yeah, project? It's about plan, but it doesn't, it defines plan and then they use the term project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not the clearest. Good afternoon, Albert. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, you got notes, right? So you're in good shape. Yeah, because truthfully, this was all. Yeah, I don't know what this means. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, there, it's also, you know, people probably just said East Montpelier is a member and they just. Figured that's encompasses close enough. everything. Close enough. These are members, right? Is a fire yeah. Presented by the respective fire departments. Great. Right so fire department. Namely, you, were you need notes on 
what we have issues with. You wrote some stuff down. I wrote some things down. Okay, great. Right. Yeah. Are you saying? I'm just thinking. Are we, do we have any? Are we going to have a few notes on that? Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you can. Give, yeah. 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 That's why I've kind of went. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I was peeking over her shoulder, looking, and like, wow, it's almost word for word. But I was. <laughs> She's really good. Day. She's really. Good. She, does, she does a great job. <laughs> um. So the so the one of the questions you can ask is it East Montpelier Fire Department or is it East Montpelier Town? I guess. I think they say are both not the same. Yeah, yeah. They're not the same. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's interesting. I didn't because I, I don't didn't think of it that way. But yeah. when you question it, yeah. I listen. Yeah. Huh. Now, <laughs> now I got questions. Yeah. Oh good. It's just then to get that answered because we are private, technically yeah. private agents. Right. Yeah. So all right. Okay. Well thanks, thanks for stepping into the chief role, Albert. And yeah. Thank you. I know there's a steep learning curve, even even though you've been on the board for a while. I don't think it's that steep. He's been on the fire department for a long time. Shouldn't be that steep. Still so steep. It's a so lot to do too. Yeah. A lot to be responsible for. Yeah. 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 How are you liking it? Right now, yeah. I got I got some challenges. I'm working my <laughs> way through. And yeah. you know whether those challenges will go away and it smooths out yeah. or just some new challenge takes its place. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. But you know, I I hope to bring um some calmness to right the turbulence we've had in the past right year, give or take the last yeah. yeah. And so well good luck with that. Yeah, right? good luck. I will do my best. That's all <laughs> yeah. I can say. Mm. All right, well, come back in when you, yeah. when you want to. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, All right. thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so next thing on our agenda, consideration of county road grant reimbursement project request. Uh, reimbursement request. Sorry about the project. Project on the mind. V-Trans Structures Grant, BC2132. So this is the final of the four grants that we have for County yeah. Road. This is the second for the North of Barnes Fulbright. Yeah. So we had a previous grant that you've already approved that was sixty thousand dollars, and we actually already received those funds. So that was actually a better roads grant. Oh yeah. Um, so this is now the final piece to that. Yeah. So um, just under twenty-five thousand, twenty-four thousand seven hundred seventy-two dollars and sixty-two cents. I don't know why this one is so precise, but it is. <laughs> um, so do we need to uh, all sign that agreement or yes I mean, he has that okay do we need to do a motion to approve it probably not if we're signing, we're signing it. it right and seth has already started the process so i'll go and write it down yeah so again as in a previous um, document like this it says i swear to the correctness etc and i have amended it to the standard vermont formulation uh, I swear or affirm to the correctness. Now, one of the oh, that one's fine. Where's the other one? It's on the avenue. You pass I, that I around. Pass that on to okay. John because it says by. It has three lines actually. There, I, I jumped down. It has a top there. line okay. and then the right next one is order. by. And the next <laughs> one is your position. Come on. Yeah, what's the by mean? Avenue, I think you authorized me to sign. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. what was the other one I saw? I, signed, you, I have the map, the CAI. Yeah, oh, the CAI, that was yeah. the one. I think it said, well, I just signed it. I, my I assume that that was, you know, some people have their secretary sign it for them. Oh, yeah, maybe that, that was, was what that was. Oh, okay. okay. The yeah. byline. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so we're signing that. And then you have one more piece to sign that's kind of up in the additional yeah. for the agenda, which is the listers. Yeah, I had that right here. So that's part of our other business, you right? Just suddenly, just but wait, we just still that there's no appeal or suit pending. Yes. So that was the added. That's, that's the addition. That's so we just pass that around, sign it. Yes. Okay. And we still have an, a big item here on our agenda. What? Warrants? Warrants? No, discussion on town management in light of COVID 19. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> wow, you were really. I know, you really jumped off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we discussed it every single meeting. 
<laughs> you have the full account. I didn't think it was a big item. Is that what we're doing now? Yeah, well, that's the next okay. item. Okay, very good. Uh, yes, so we have some information, as usual, from our town administrator on the state of COVID. Thank you for, for that. And uh, I interviewed on the radio last Thursday, John Matthew, who is the founder and CEO and medical director of the health center in Plainfield, talking about their um, their clinics that mm -hmm. they have for flu shots and COVID shots that now there are 11 of them left. They are Saturdays, nine to noon at the health center. And you can also get uh, masks and um, at-home antigen tests there. He commented on the state of COVID right now. We talked about how 80% of Vermonters have gotten the initial vaccination, but only one third are fully boosted with the new bivalent booster. And uh, they're trying to get more people in to get that final vaccination. And um, he commented on the underreporting that we've talked about many times here. And he said, uh, and this is new to me, um, that sometimes uh, people who not only test positive and maybe are even treated don't get reported into the system. So that, that was a new wrinkle. And uh, he commented that the death rate is down about 90% from. I guess what it was at its peak. So that's some news from the front. And uh, they did have a cus uh, customer, a client, a patient uh, die of COVID recently mm -hmm. at the health center. But most, most people who get it these days, um, even if they have to seek medical care, they, they don't die from it. And uh, your chances of, vaccinate, of not dying are increased if you're vaccinated. And uh, they also have treatments and they have treatments for long COVID as well. He talked about the, the problem that long COVID is and how even young people, you know, college age people are getting hit by long COVID. And we talked about the millions of people in the US who are- Are those people getting, vaccinated or not vaccinated? Uh, we, we didn't talk oh. about that, uh, but he did talk about uh, treatments that you can <clears throat> give to people and he, he listed about five of them. So mm -hmm. it is medically <clears throat> treatable. You know, how successful those treatments are, we, we didn't talk about, but there are uh, there are treatments available. They were advertising on the on television tonight that uh, that is it Paxlovid. That's one yeah. of them. That, yeah. that, that they said if you think you have it, even even you know even if you've been boosted, mm -hmm. tell your medical provider that you have COVID and discuss it with them so that okay. and take that as soon as you can between what three and five days after you uh -huh. find out that you're positive. Mm -hmm. And they're just saying, just do it. Mm -hmm. And you may have to take, you may take it or you may not, but it can shorten, substantially shorten. What's it called? Paxlovid. 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 Yeah. Oh, Paxlovid. It, it, it oh. definitely can shorten your, your illness. And that another, another dosage or round of that is one of the treatments you mentioned for long COVID. Mm -hmm. And just oh. since we're in the meeting for anyone that may watch this that is not on like a front porch forum, we do have COVID tests here at the town office. Mm -hmm. So for okay. anyone that needs those. So it's actually been it's funny. We never had anyone request and one person called Rosie and asked. So she ordered a rather hefty supply. Oh, okay. And now we've it's had almost daily people coming in and, and getting COVID tests and she's put the post on front porch form. So it's been Excellent. Like, very Great. well received. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank Rosie for that. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can grab some on your way out if yeah. anybody needs. They're actually right, right in the lobby. Okay. So that is my my comment on that okay. agenda item for today. So. Very good. Uh, well, it seemed to be long for a comment, but thank you for your. Um, <laughs> I was going to say it was short, short and sweet. Oh, you were, <laughs> but I was long for a comment. <laughs> you don't think it's a speech? No. <laughs> oh. I thought he was going to have a dissertation for a while. <laughs> that was on, on tobacco problems. That's right. Never mind. <laughs> the next thing on our agenda is warrants, and uh, that's going around. Yep. And we're, oh, the other business, I had that one thing. Have you done all yours? Well, we have the TA report, but it uh, doesn't No, yeah, but me. the other business, um, well, if you do it after your report. Um, want me to? Yeah, start laughing. Oh, move. So uh, zoning administrator, just a reminder, this was mentioned at the last meeting, but we'll be out of the office uh, next week and the week after. Uh, he is available via phone if needed. He just will not be able to hold his regular office hours. 
um, want to give some huge kudos and praise to Rosie. WCAX visited the office on Friday and Rosie was interviewed by uh, Melissa Thanks. Cooney, who was very nice. Um, and it was about town meeting and Melissa reached out to the office because she, we were identified as a town that kind of has a hybrid approach to town meeting. So she interviewed town clerk LeCare and went through what our process is and Rosie did an exceptional job um, in that interview. So just want to give huge props to, to Rosie for that awesome. very proud moment in this office. So um, right. Right. Stay Cheating. tuned for when that will air. Um, Melissa Cooney did say she would let us know um, when they will be airing that. It will be closer to town meeting right. um, day, of course, but um, just wanted you all to know that. It's kind of a big deal in the office on Friday. Yeah, great. Yeah. Rosie gave me an election update that the town ballots, I think they were going in the mail today, or I think they were going in the mail today. Um, and that the town ballots will be in the same envelope with the school ballots. Um, and then for the Central Vermont Career Center ballots, people have to call and request those if they would like those mailed. She hasn't really gotten too many calls for those just yet. Uh, there was one permit issued since last meeting. And to let you all know- That's that, a zoning permit? Yeah, zoning okay. permit, correct. Um, the DRB held a meeting last week and just provided you an update of the three different permits that they um, that they considered. Um, essentially, two kind of boundary well, two subdivisions slash boundary line adjustments, and then also um, rather close to the office um, at Fontaine Meadows property. Um, that's kind of across the street from Box Market, but there will be a farm store um, being built on that. I believe all of these were approved. And then we have the upcoming upcoming meeting schedule. February 27th is the next meeting. Then we get into town meeting. We will have the regular meeting on March 6th, town meeting on March 7th, and then the next regular meeting date is March 20th. Assuming that fits into everyone's schedules. Perfect. Yep. Sounds good. I've got one thing that I wanted to say too. I, this just in, this news just in. There is, so as you all know, that I am um, not running again, and there is an open spot now on the select board. I just got wind of somebody that might be interested in it. Um, I don't know this person personally. Do you want me to reach out to him, or does somebody that's going to be on the select board want to do it? I don't know this person personally. It was referred to me by somebody that I know well. But. Well, it's going to be, um, we'll be advertising for the, the positions through right. the normal process and then sure no you're going to appoint somebody yeah yeah well, there's, so, still, there's still the option of the person running as a writing candidate yes yeah. oh yeah that's true too. yeah they could do that mm -hmm. so yeah. do you want me to talk to this person even though i don't know him or does somebody else want to do it i'm happy to do no, it you're good. okay i'll do it I'll sure. come tomorrow. okay so a writing candidate it's hard to write it in the candidate when you don't know the name so how does that work Somebody would we have to in. learn the person's name. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> with the person essentially like maybe put something on from work. Yeah, the person saying, would hey, I'm interested in running for select board, yeah. write my name in, let me yeah, tell I need you 30, about myself. 30, that's that's, that's what they'd, they'd have to do. Yeah. They'd have to do something because I mean, yeah, sorry. So how would they 30, I was thinking how would they get written in unless they put their own name in? You have to have 30, you have to have 30 signatures or 25. That votes. Yeah, so that's yeah, the same right. thing I said. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't listening you to what I you. That. No, no, I screwed it up. Yeah, yeah I figured you did. So yeah. I didn't but you did it too, though. Yeah. So oh. I screwed it up independently. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, sure. Okay. You can sure. say what the process entails if you're going to be a writing candidate. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell Matt. Then. Okay. Sure. Or they could wait and you know do you or they do can the whole, and throw their yes. hat in the ring in the, at, at when we solicit the application. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, why would you not want to be a slide board member? You know, I can't think of two. I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want to. Are you asking me personally? I just, I just no, I just had to get out of the way because Scott wanted to do it so badly. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> wow. I didn't want to squash his dreams. Snacks, what you know? do they call that? Nepotism? <laughs> <laughs> They're a power family. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can see that. Um, Powerless. Okay, family. so let's do other business while we're flat on. Yes. Um, what do you have? You had more? 
No, no, I just had that one. Okay, so the parking along the Vincent Flats Road adjacent to school is an issue. Um, the farm up the road is expressing concern. Tractor trailer is going by, huge line of cars, another truck coming up the road. So it's too narrow. A lot of parents are picking the kids up. The system that they have in place for kids to be picked up is very slow because you got a radio in the school and then they radio out and the parent there and then they send the kid out one at a time. It's not like there's a bunch of kids being left out and they all go to the parents' cars. It's one at a time and they won't change the system. There's a parent, the person called the principal and they're like, no, we're not changing that. So what the principal asked for was, could they park cars down adjacent to the rec field um, and it needs to be plowed in order for that to happen. So that's so is one this thing. Parking or is it standing? Are, are there people in these cars? That um, the yeah, there's people, parents, but the parents could park down there and mm -hmm. take the path, you know, the path that goes from the rec field to uh -huh. the school. Uh -huh. They wouldn't be in the road. Uh -huh. They could walk up there and pick up the right. kid, or they could use the parking lot above the school and the people that are teaching there and use that parking lot, uh -huh. they could park down there. Right. Right. Yes, Carl, the, the cars are queued up and uh -huh. yes, people are in okay. the car. Yeah, and of course, this points to um, the issue that parents don't want their little loved ones to ride on school bus. It makes the bus driver pretty low lane. <clears throat> I, I don't think it's good myself, but no, that's my not. personal opinion. I think kids should ride the school bus. I don't think they should be along the cars idling away up there yeah. sitting by the school. It's terrible. But I don't think you can legislate that away. But what we could do is put signs up to say no parking, and we could get the um, parking lot plowed by the rec field, and we could put up no parking signs. Really, though, we really should change the ordinance that says we could put those signs up there, but, which we but had discussed not, before. But, but they're not parking. We're here. There's nobody parking there. Well, they're not parked they're there idling. hours at a time, but they could be there for an hour parked. But if there are people in the car, my understanding is that's not parking. We could say no standing. Well, we could say something. Yeah. You don't think parking for an hour or so waiting for Johnny to come out of the my, not parking? My understanding, and in, in this, I have not looked this up in the statute. This is just what I was taught as a kid, is that you're when you're parking, you are not in the car. As long as you're in the car, then you're not parking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I in remember boring teenage years. Car, they call that parking. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no standing, stopping, or parking is what I've seen when you really don't want any cars that are more. Okay, well, there. we could put up some signage, but in order to make it legal, we have to change our ordinance, but we could put right. up the signage anyway. We could. It's not <laughs> we could. To, to change the ordinance either. I know it's not. So I mean, you update a whole bunch of things on that ordinance. That's right. So I advocate that we change our ordinance, we put up signs, and we say we plow the parking lot down there. And if we want to send the school bill, we could, or we could just pay for ourselves. You want, say no, you want to say no smoking in the car, too? Uh, that's a few. <laughs> <laughs> How about no drinking? <laughs> no alcohol beverages yeah. being consumed. No open being, fire. While you're parking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Restaurants and bring them home. What? Don't you remember that? Don't I remember it. that, like, but yeah. What's that? People could drop, no, people could drop in and pick up a drink at a restaurant or a bar and bring it home with you. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Are you talking it's about just, during COVID? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. So not, they just have open containers yeah. in the yeah. car, but yeah. they must relax that, right? right. <laughs> you drive it. Okay, you're not drinking it. Okay. It's a, it's a state of emergency. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so um, what does everyone think? About what? what? About <laughs> plowing the wreck. <laughs> I need more information. Uh, okay. um i need i need like a diagram i'm having a hard time visualizing this and appreciating the problem um so i, so, I don't have enough information to make a recommendation um I I there in the morning. every day I I've, do too. I've driven through that so what it is they're basically lining up along vincent flats along basically towards the entrance to the round the circular drive that's at the elementary school the school side so the in school. both directions are they coming from both yeah, directions it's only on one direction it's only coming from dodge road to, okay. to the school and so down below the, down below to the rec field they park all the way along all the way along that side have, have they, that's they, then that's new that they're adding on then well it's, it's been, been a long 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 line yeah so it makes it difficult when you're driving on the road. There's one lane, essentially, or a very partial lane. 
if you're trying to go from Dodge Road to Quaker on Vincent Platt. So I know when I have done it, I hang back and wait to try to have the other side clear. Honestly, at some point you just have to go because it just doesn't happen because of the number of cars that are coming at you that typically are stopping to turn at school. So I usually will go and just go very, very slow down. But to, to Seth's point, I'm driving a, a Subaru doing that. I'm not in a very large farm vehicle. So mm -hmm. if you have a large truck, there's just not enough room. So it's, I think creating a safety, it's a safety issue. Yeah, um, I mean, one truck's coming down the road this way, another one's coming up this way. The line of cars is long, there's no place to go. Mm -hmm. Or they're gonna meet a car. And know, I can just, tell you that one of the houses that's in that area had put up a bunch of signs yes. to tell people to stop blocking their driveway. Yep. So that was certainly a of contention for, for a mm -hmm. while as well. Yeah, um, I think the sign has, has kind of worn out and people seem to have, don't do that anymore. They don't block the driveway, at least mm -hmm. when I have driven by there. Yeah, it has been an issue with the parking lot at times. But. So I, you're going to have signs. How is that going to be enforced? Well, that is always you the can't. issue. You can't really. Well, you can enforce it if you have an ordinance. You but could. you can't, I mean, what resources would you use then to you'd have police? You'd have to have police and you'd yeah. have to be ability to get we, tickets. Yeah, we, we're we not going to pay the state unless we, this is something we, we want to do. Already. Yeah. We pay them already to be in town. You just call them and say, look, we have this problem up there. Can you come up and write some tickets for a few days? I can assure you if they wrote a few tickets, they wouldn't be parking there. Yeah. <laughs> but the issue is we don't need to do that. If we can clear out a parking space down at the recreation field, right. somebody can park down there, parents or teachers, exactly, and get them off the road. That's yeah, it's just not enough parking yeah. space. I just want to do it in a positive manner, not yeah. enforce exactly. it. Well, right. I'm, I'm convinced that this is a problem, and yeah. I don't know what the best solution is. And I, I think that uh, we should have a conversation with some other people who are involved in this, whether it's the school administration, uh, whether it's a representative from the PTO, maybe all of them. But I, I don't think unilateral action on our part is likely to be real successful. It's not going to make people very happy either. Yeah. What, opening spoken? up the parking area? Is not no, no, not that. If we were going to enforce against them. Oh, no, but I'm just talking. A first so, step because we have a mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, that's a good idea, Carl. Like maybe, you know, administration, PTO, and a representative from the rec committee to talk about, you know, that alternative that you're suggesting, um, Seth. Yeah, somebody has talked to the rec committee already, but we can, whatever you want to do. But uh, the person that called me today was one of the owners of the farm up there, and they have talked to the rec committee and they talked to the principal. But, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just saying that's what's happened. And they suggested the solution of the rec field park. So shall we invite for our next meeting, uh, the principal, PTO rep, and the uh, rec committee rep? If you want. Go for it. Sure. And uh, is our road foreman willing to take on that extra plan? You can ask him. Yeah, okay. I mean, the way it snowed this year, it wouldn't be too much. Right. But they would have to swing in there. Yeah. No question yeah. about it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Put it on our agenda. Thanks, Thanks, for, thanks for bringing that to our agenda. <clears throat> yeah. What's next? Thank you. What's next? What's next on the agenda? Um, I think we've done all the other business. Um, we are a little, we're a little bit early. So we should talk about something really. It's going to take like two hours. <laughs> yes. Then we've been putting off a long time. Oh, there is something? Yeah. Oh, Do you okay. want me just to think? <laughs> oh, that we adjourn. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll say that. Yeah. All, well, all of the favor, please say aye. 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 Ron, are you going to vote on that? Yeah, I said.